can't ignore Sanders. <laughs> Our long feud ends tonight, insect. Welcome to the park. Just in time for the fight. Welcome back. Over the past few videos, we've been building the Sinister Six by Epic Prop, and today we're painting Electro. I always like to start with the base. This way you have somewhere to put your model while you're working on it, while the paint's drying, other than just laying it on your table. Start off with painting the bricks using my brick formula, which always begins with oak brown. Follow that up by using dry brush orange. Just hit a couple of bricks, a few select ones. You don't want to coat everything with this because you're just adding accents at this point. To finish the bricks, I like to top them off with red oxide from Mission Models. Again, not going everywhere, just hitting a few choice bricks for variety of color. Once that's all dried, it's weathering time. I like to start with a soft tone, get down into the crevices and really just coat the entire thing. Let that dry just as it is. I don't even sponge any of this up. After the soft tone is dried, or almost dried, I like to come back with a strong tone, go over all those cracks and crevices and get down in the deep recesses. And also you hit a couple of choice bricks just to add some natural contrast and again let the wash dry fully before going to the next steps which is dry brushing I dry brush the whole base using ash gray this gives it a concrete debris dusty look and feel to it like there was a big explosion and there's just stuff everywhere I take this a step further by using some of Vallejo's earth tone pigments. Take a pipette, pull them out of the bottle, and put them right exactly where I want them to be. This is a whole lot easier than trying to do it with a brush. I do use a brush to spread it out, put a thin layer where I need it to be, and get rid of some of the excess. Once this first layer is down, I use aerosol hairspray. Yes, hairspray. Varnish soaks into the pigments and you lose a lot of the effect, where as the hairspray does get soaked up a little bit, but it adds beauty and holds all day with tender control. Another way to apply this is by spraying a little bit thicker layer of the hairspray first, and then putting the pigments on top of that. This allows for the pigments to be used in a thinner layer, but still adhere to the base for the effect that you're going for. The downside is you don't have the ability to spread the pigments around with a brush after you apply it. I let the hairspray dry and varnish it in and move on to the electrical coils. Putting on a Rust-Oleum high gloss black before adding Rust-Oleum metal finish chrome. After the chrome drives, I put on a clear coat that kills the chrome finish, but it leaves an aluminum finish, which is what I was going for. I go over the bottom of the coils with Choco Brown, followed by heavy dry brushing using a mix of black and Vallejo Dark Aluminum. I didn't want this to look like a new piece of hardware or equipment, so which is why I went with the brown underneath and dry brushed the metallic color on top of it to give it an older and more distinguished look. I also use the Choco Brown to base coat the bottoms of the globes. This provided a really good undertone for me to use this Deco Art Metallic Copper. I picked up a set of this metallic paint from Michaels and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. 
And I didn't want this to end up being a smooth copper finish. I wanted it to have a little texture and a little grit into it, which is why I'm just brushing it on. I watered down some matte black and splotched it on everywhere. I just wanted the copper to look dirty and not look shiny like it's brand new. I didn't actually capture the painting of the globes on camera, so I'm sorry about that. But I can tell you how I did it. I took some metallic blue oil paint, thinned it down with the mineral spirits, literally poured it inside the globes and just switched it around. I let it set inside for a couple of seconds and then poured it out. This resulted in an uneven coverage on the inside, which actually turned out perfect for what I needed. For the cracks on this broken globe, I used sapphire blue candy ink, which really complemented the oil paint on the inside very well. I use the same candy ink to tint the piece that goes inside the coils. As you can see, I've already ran the wires here for some of the LEDs, but we'll talk more about that later. Now for the man himself. I base coated Electro with Black Jungle Green from the Scale 75 Drop and Paint series. I went with two mid-tones for this just to add a little extra depth. Started with Kraken Green from Green Surf World. And I followed that up with Jade Green Candy Ink, which is also from Green Stuff World. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm only letting the brush touch the model from the top down so that it doesn't get underneath and add brighter green to where it shouldn't be. As you can see, the wiring that I ran for the lighting keeps getting in the way. But that's okay because it's totally worth it in the end. For the highest highlight, I go with Citrine Yellow, which is also a candy ink from Green Stuff World. Again, I'm just brushing this from the top down and I'm being very selective with where I put this because it's only the highest of highlights. After all this dries and about two or three coats of varnish, I mask off the green using this AK masking putty. If you haven't tried this stuff, you got to get it. You have to get it. It's a must have. It's so much better than liquid mask and tape. I promise you, you won't regret it. For the yellow in the suit, I used three colors. Started with Vallejo's Yellow Orca. Followed that up with Diabolic Orange for the shadows and Lemon Yellow for the highlights. Going back to the putty, it is great for masking. It's not really great for masking up figure this size and trying to paint everything I actually once I got it all off I put it back on and painted, repainted the top half and repainted the bottom half separately just because the way this masking putty works it kind of droops as it warms up and settles and that caused some issues uh, with some of the hard lines that needed to be there for this suit now for the only skin tone on this model I'll start base coating this with Vallejo's Reddish Flesh from the Nocturnal set. It's going to be the deepest shadow color that you'll see on this face. So I want to make sure I get it all up in his eyes and around the underside of the mask and everything. Once this dries, I go over the face again with a very thin coat of the Scale 75 Blackheart Brown. Once that's dried, I come back and spray light skin from Scale 75, only from the top. This is where your highlights are. You don't want to spray this from underneath and change the entire tone of the face. This gets followed up by pale skin for only the highest of high points, the tip of his nose, the top of his chin, things like that. Uh, I may have went under his eyes just a little bit, but most of that gets covered up by the mask. Once dried, put on your varnish, and I also follow this up with a red, blue, and yellow wash, as you can see in my previous videos, before moving on to painting the details on his face. I use watered down pink flesh for the lips, for his teeth and his eyes as a base coat. I started with game color bone white, Follow that up by using 
mummy robes to brighten them up. Now I do use white for his eyes only because I'm going to use citrine yellow, the candy ink, for a glowing effect. But in all honesty, I'm just using this method to not have to paint pupils. That's how you avoid such things. It took a couple of coats of the yellow to get it to the brightness that I wanted. Unfortunately, I didn't think to put lights in his eyes to avoid having to paint them all together, but it turned out okay. I used the masking putty to mask off the skin tone and the rest of his mask. I used the same trio of yellows to paint his mask. And here I'm doing touch-ups with just gloss black, getting around his eyes, getting around the trim of the face mask, and just cleaning all that up. I use alcohol inks to paint some of the lightning bolts, just some pieces of them. I don't paint the whole thing, just to give it some accents so that it doesn't look boring when it's when the lights aren't on. Now I'm going to do a separate video just for the lighting for this model because it is so much into it to make this happen. But I want to thank the great folks over at evandesign.com and particularly Shelly. She helped me get the parts that I needed for this build and was wonderful throughout the process with all my questions and everything super super helpful go to them for any of your led lighting needs they're just simply amazing over there right after i got this model evan designs released a lightning kit which is a two bulb system that randomly fires each led giving off a very realistic lightning effect because this model is a 1 6 scale model i use some really small lights to get into some of these areas in fact, I use these Pico LEDs, which are amazingly small, super tiny. The only thing smaller than these is fiber optics. So you may have noticed this model has more than two bulbs. So how'd I pull that off? Well, each kit has two legs. I'll call them A and B. I removed the two LEDs and added four to each leg in its place. Then I added three full circuits for a total of six legs and 24 total possible LEDs. No, I didn't use all 24. Wow, that's a lot of lights. Yes, it is. And I planned where each of these would go well before I even started putting the model together. The power connector is integrated into the model. It uses a wall outlet with a switch on it. I had this set of JST connectors from another project that was just perfect for this. I labeled and wired all the LEDs into the circuits that they needed to attach to. I mapped out all the positive and negatives and soldered the female end onto none other than the electro cookie board. This board had this model's name written all over it. Put her thing plugged into the board, tucked the board into the base, made a cover for it, and we're ready for glamour shots. But not before this epilepsy warning. There's a few still shots before the video. Please don't have a seizure. You guys enjoyed that i certainly enjoyed making the video thanks to epic prop for making such an amazing model looking forward to completing this set because i know what's coming next big shout out to my patrons you guys help pay for the electricity that is shooting out of electro's fingers also enjoy your friendship and all the fun that we have when we're painting and the push you give me to always do better like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video hug your neighbor or girlfriend We'll catch you next time.